Spreadsheets filled with numbers do not show us the patterns in the numbers. Visualizations such as column charts and pie charts can help us see the patterns in the numbers. In this video, I'll be introducing how to make column charts, pie charts, and Pareto charts with Google Sheets. The data I'll be using comes from my daily runs. I often run the same routes. This particular route is the route to Spanish Wall. I've run to Spanish Wall now 194 times, most recently on April 23rd, 2020. Here are the number of times I've run on the five different routes that I most frequently run. Spanish Wall is now 194 runs to Spanish Wall. So the frequency is the number of times I've run that route. I'll do a little bit of formatting here. I'm going to just select A1 and B1. And here at the top, there's an A. And from the A, I can bold those. And I can, on the right, click on Cell choose a fill color. If I choose a primary color, I can then choose a secondary fill color. And let me tap on B2, back on B1, and I'll shift that to the right so that the frequency is right aligned like the numbers underneath it. Numbers automatically right aligned. It's nice to have the labels on top of the numbers. So to make a pie chart or a column chart, all I have to do is press the plus sign next to that A I typed earlier. That A does formatting, the plus sign gives me a chart. And it'll give me automatically a uh, column chart correctly labeled if I've set the table up as seen in the spreadsheet with the labels in row one and the data in the columns underneath. The Google Sheets has automatically figured out that column A will be labels and column B will be the frequency values for the column heights. You'll notice that there is both a frequency label on the left axis and a legend on the right. I don't need both, so I'll go ahead and remove the redundant legend. I click on legend. Scroll down. There's sometimes things hidden off the bottom. Tell it I don't need a legend. Go back. Uh, if I want to change the color of the bars, I can do that as well. And when I've got what I like, I simply tap on the check and it will insert the chart into my spreadsheet as seen here. I can tap on it, I can move it. If I need to do further editing of it, I can long tap on it and then tap on edit chart and then I can edit the chart itself. I can add a title to the chart. Uh, I can customize the title. Uh, and uh, that will change the title of the chart. Let me go ahead and long tap and delete that. Tap again in A1 here. Tap on that plus sign. And this time I'll choose a pie chart. Under type, I just tap on type and pie is a second type and it gives me a pie chart. If I tape the left arrow and come back, I can now edit the legend if I wish. I can have the legend on the right or the left as, as colors, or I can scroll down and shift back to a label or leave it at auto. Tap and I can slide that around. The pie chart shows that about half of my runs are the runs to Spanish Wall. Long tap, I'll delete that. A Pareto chart is a column chart in order from the most frequent to the least frequent value. To do that, I'll need to sort column B. If I tap on the B at the top of column B, and I tap on the B again, a menu will come up, and on the right there are three overflow dots. Tap on that overflow menu, and I can sort it from A to Z. However, you'll see that it has also sorted my labels in row one, and I did not want it to do that. At the top of the screen are two curved arrows, a left curved and right curved arrow. 
Tap the left curve arrow to undo what you just did. Anytime you do something you didn't mean to, just tap on the undo arrow. You can tap on it more than once to undo more than one thing that you did that you want to undo. So to keep the labels from being sorted, I tap on the one on the right side, and I tap on the one again, the number one, and again I get that menu with the overflow three dots. Tap on the three dots and tell it to freeze row one. Now I'll tap on the B, tap on the B again, and again tap on the three dots, and this time I'll sort from A to Z. And now I've sorted just the data and not the labels. By freezing row one, you can see by freezing what it means is it stays there even when I scroll. By freezing row one, I've been able to sort by column B, and you'll notice the labels have stayed with their numbers. I'll tap again on B and tap one more time, and I want to sort them in reverse order from the largest number to the smallest number. Now I'll tap in A1, press the plus sign, add a chart, go ahead and remove the legend, and this then is a Pareto chart. This is a Pareto chart. It has the largest column on the left and the smallest column on the right. It shows us the data in a decreasing order and it tells us something about the pattern in which the data occurs. So this is a brief introduction to pie charts and to column charts. One thing to watch out for, you do have to have your cursor you tapped into your table that you're trying to graph. If you happen to have your cursor somewhere else, like here down in A32, and you type plus and you type chart, you will see this, no data. That's because we uh, spit this point. And so if you get no data, you can just uh, delete that out and return to your data sheet. I like to go into A1. You don't have to go into A1, but it's by using it to your sheet that you can make a chart. So that's a brief introduction, as I said, to charts and graphs. Uh, do try making charts and graphs. Do try different variations in some of the options that you have. There are a lot of options, a lot of formatting details you can go into on these graphs, but that'll get you started on basic column charts, pie charts, and sorting Pareto charts out as well.